time that um, I was here at least for one of our meetings was when we were planning the cultural district. And then before that, I think I've seen many of you have attended um, attended a, a cultural planning meeting. How many people attended a meeting of the uh, cultural planning focus groups? more businesses, I would say. But anyway, um, so you're going to do introductions in a minute, but I know I should probably first just introduce myself. I'm Stephanie Marlin Curiel, and um, I'm co-chair uh, here with Kristen Bagno. And uh, you're going to be hearing a lot about ACAC tonight. Um, how many people are already familiar with Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture? Okay. Most. How many people have never heard of it? People are new. Okay. Hey, this is good. Um, good that the, there's most, and there's good that there's a few people who are learning something new tonight. And I think all of you will learn um, a little bit more new about about what we do, and also about um, each other. So, um, really, after we've had any of these meetings, great things have happened. Um, back in 2012, there was a meeting, which was really the inception of all of this infrastructure building, where you know the commission came out of that. And there was a, um, and and then eventually the cultural district, and then eventually the, you know, the cultural plan, and now sort of, this these kinds of gatherings where we're trying to build, um, you know, a real art sector. So um, I'm hoping, you know, for for great things to emerge after tonight because magical things come happen when we come together. So um, all right, let's do some introductions and find out a little bit everyone who is here. Um, I want to start with, well, let, no, let's go in order. Some people will be commission members and some people will be other members. Everyone, please say your name, your organization, and one thing you really love about Arlington. So, um, Charlotte, do you want to start? <laughs> I'm Charlotte Pierce, and I represent three organizations tonight. Yeah, and we're going to speak up because of the heater. That's oh, yeah, a heater, yeah, yeah. So. I, I'm Charlotte Pierce. And I represent three organizations, uh, primarily the uh, St. John's Coffee House Concert Series, and also ACMI, and the in Independent Publishers of New England. So, Okay, Ted Peluso is here as an interested and involved citizen and a supporter of the arts, interested in what's going on. I'm Susan Cannon, and I'm here uh, for Odeco New England. Um, we recently moved here from Woodburn, so we're new to Arlington. Everybody hear that? Oh, it's a Japanese drumming group. Yeah. And you'll be at the coffee house in April. Yeah, yeah I just I just wrote it down. <laughs> I am also, my name is Kate. I am also from Odaigo, New England. And we are so happy to be in Arlington. We came from a community that was kind of indifferent to the arts. And it's just... That's why there's two of us here. We are so excited. <laughs> Ar Arlington, we've only been here a short time, and Arlington has really changed our organization. It's wow. noticeable. We're, so we're thrilled. We're thrilled. My name is James Milan, and I uh, am the communications manager at ACMI, the local cable television station. I'm here mostly. Um, to ensure that uh, you guys leave here understanding what we can do for you. Great. Great. Uh, I'm Stuart Iketa. I'm a commissioner with ACAC, uh, the school committee appointee for the ACAC. And uh, the thing I love about Arlington is the volunteer spirit and the ability of everyone to really get involved and get engaged in improving the town. Yes. Okay, my name is Terry Holtz, and I am the new marketing coordinator for ACAC. Uh, I am the person from Arts Arlington who's sending you emails, and thank you so much for responding to me. Nice to finally put some faces with names. Hi, my name is Anne Ellinger. I'm with True Stories Theater, and I. Uh, Oh, I love so many things. I guess one is just that I can walk along the bike path, and especially now see all this art along the bike path. I'm with her, Christopher Ellinger. Um, 
a running two story theater. So we've been in Arlington for 18 years, have 20 odd members of our ensemble, have partnered with many of you on different events, including ACAC. I'm Lydia Penick Scher, and I am one of the commissioners, and my role is also representing ArtLinks, which is a network organization for artists. So if you want, and we represent all of the artists in Arlington. No, my name is Mark Sandman, and I'm one of the co hosts of the Share a job of what we might take place the first Friday of every month. Uh, Which cafe? Which cafe? Kickstand Cafe. Oh, it's the Kickstand Stand. Okay. I'm Julie McBride from uh, French of Sight on Art. Um, and I, I like the sense of community in Arlington. Um, Hi, I'm Betsy Schramm. I'm the. Um, what am I? <laughs> Oh, I'm a composer and I run the Monotomy Concert Series and we give three concerts uh, about five times a year in Arlington Town Hall. We mainly host great classical performers. And what I love about Arlington is the great music in the Arlington Public Schools. The music programs are fantastic. <laughs> um, my name is Sarah. I'm an Arlington parent. I have two arts kids. Um, and uh, I'm a consultant, so I work with a, a whole bunch of arts nonprofits in different ways in Massachusetts. Uh, my name is Cecily, and I work for the town and for ACAC as a public art curator. Um, I've been developing the projects that you see on the bikeway, and. Um, also worked on art in the bus shelters, if any of you saw that, and uh, the wheat paste on the Fox Library and the mural on Za restaurant. And I hope to keep going and do more. And we have a project at the library. And hello, Cecily. And if you just hadn't even been aware that I sat down next to you, I'm Sarah Burks from the Cyrus Gallon Art Museum. Chair of the Board of Trustees there, and um, we have a couple of big events each year. One is on Town Day when we have the artists selling their wares in front of the museum Art on the Green, and then we've um, instituted an annual fundraiser, uh, the Soiree, and uh, we also offer group tours. So if any of your organizations want to come visit the museum, uh, let me know, and we can make arrangements for that. Hello, uh, my name is Adam Schuler. I'm the newly appointed artistic director of the Arlington Children's Theater, uh, and we are a nonprofit children's theater organization. We've been around for 28 years, and we do about seven main stage productions each year. We have day programming throughout the year, um, and we also have workshop series going on as well. Uh, uh, really enjoying getting to know our Um, Tom and Kristen, do you want to take a seat here around Adria? And then it'll be your turn to introduce yourselves too. Mm -hmm. Kristen, you want to go first? Okay. Hi, I'm Kristen Hayes. I'm the Director of Arts and Am I a commissioner? Yes. yes. <laughs> I just went to my first ACAC meeting last week. Uh, so I'm only one week old at the ACAC, and I'm the new executive director of the Arlington Center for the Arts, which I'm thrilled about. And my favorite thing about Arlington is um, there's no such thing as six degrees of separation here. It's one degree of separation. <laughs> I found that out so quickly. <laughs> Hi, I'm 
to be a, I'm a program officer with the Mass Cultural Council for the Community Initiative. So I work directly with the Arlington Cultural Council. Um, so I help to manage uh, local cultural councils in a few regions throughout the country. I mean, throughout the state. Whoa, that's a lot. <laughs> um, and I also help um, support the Cultural Districts Program and the Festivals Program. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you for coming. I'm Abby Seidel. Um, I am the development director at Arlington Press and Roma. Um, this is my first year, so it's really brand new to me. Um, but uh, one thing I really enjoy about Arlington, um, my family has grown up in Arlington for three generations at this point. I didn't, unfortunately, I was born in Arlington, but didn't, grew up in that right next door. Um, but I like, I still enjoy the sense that of the community that it represents me. I still feel like I belong, even though I didn't grow up. I almost went to Arlington High because I like Arlington High so much better. <laughs> but I ended up going to that grade. But yeah, I love, I love the sense of community here. <laughs> I'm Judy Weinberg. I'm the president of Arlington Friends of Nava. Uh, I'm also the president of Friends of the Nava Rocks Park. And we've had some good art installations there as well. We've had some concerts there. Um, so I agree about the one degree separation. I mean, I agree for dog walking. I mean, it's just like, everyone knows everyone is great. I'm Andrea Nicolai, director of libraries in town, and I also am a commissioner, and I also am on the managing partnership for the cultural district. And it's been a real um, unexpected and awesome pleasure to be working with so many people involved in arts and culture in town. And I, what I love about Arlington is that it's a town of readers and media consumers, keeping the library going strong. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. All right, great. I didn't say my favorite thing about Arlington. I would say it's that it's a mixture of you can walk in one direction, it's urban, you can walk in so many directions and you're out in nature. And also just that it's kind of like a, a wonderful blank. I mean, not, it's not blank, but it's, it's a canvas that you paint over and over and over. You know, you to keep feeling in the corners and little bits. And I think that we can all do that together. Um, and yeah, change colors and add layers and texture as we go, like the great painters. So, um, okay. So great, I want to just say that I know that uh, one of our collective goals together before I've even read your surveys is that we want to create, we want to paint that canvas. We want to make a really vibrant, um, sustainable, cultural um, arts uh, community, art scene, a, a, you know, an environment where the arts can thrive. And so um, there, tonight we're going to focus on doing that in three ways. Um, we're going to build relationships between arts organizations and ACAC, so you all and ACAC, and figure out what ACA, what role ACAC is uniquely suited to play. So um, hopefully we can work toward that tonight. We're going to build a relationship and networks among all of you. Um, and with the results that you have allies, you have people you can consult for advice, you have people you can collaborate with, you have some connective tissue, and you have a lot of new opportunities. Um, that we hope some of that will come out tonight, at least the beginnings. Um, and then we're going to build. We're going to build the creative sector of Arlington as a, as an um, an organized collective. So we'd like to start thinking of, of ourselves, you know, sort of as a community, as a collective, and start sharing more ideas, start taking action together. And so we're going to work on that a little bit tonight too. So, um, okay. great. Um, the agenda for tonight. Very quickly, um, we've done our welcome introductions. We are now going to tell you a little bit about ACAC and what we offer. Then we're going to have we have a special guest, Sarah Stackhouse, whom you met before, um, who will introduce herself a little bit later, is going to talk to us about sector building um, and why working as a collective is a very effective way to go about things. Uh, we're going to go over your survey results a little bit if we have time. I'll just highlight them. Then we're going to have breakout discussions, and then we're going to have report backs, and then we'll wrap up. And we're going to try to do all that as close to 9 o'clock as possible. We are just a little bit behind, but um, we'll try to catch up with the time. So what is ACAC? Um, actually, so what we are is we're an umbrella organization for many of the other arts or organizations in town, such as the Arlington Cultural Council, such as Arlington Public Art, um, and, and all of these have now been brought under one umbrella and the, and the um, Cultural District Managing Partnership. So when we got to this point, and we also always had uh, the Arlington Center for the Arts, which is not under our umbrella, but they are 
represented and part of the commission, so part of the conversation. Um, and the idea was that we were now, I mean, we got to the point where all these organizations, you know, just kind of grew up out of need and interest of the community. And we really needed to get organized and sort of, you know, come together so that we could you know, not work at cross purposes and we could we could think together about the best way to move forward, to move all of us forward so we can grow um, as a community. Um, so I'm gonna read off, we just did our strategic planning process and we have a brand new mission. So I'm just gonna read that out here. Uh, the Arlington Commission for Arts and Culture cultivates a sustainable and supportive environment for the arts and enlivens public space with accessible creative experiences to strengthen our community, create opportunities for artists, and invigorate the local economy. So the main idea there is we're trying to we're trying to cultivate a healthy environment for the arts. When part of that means that we're trying to you know create um, synergistic partnerships among all of us, and we're trying to um, work on policy, have a cultural plan, work with the town and the planning projects in town. Um, and, uh, and, and we have our cultural district, which is, which is one model of organizing partnerships and actually Andrea will encourage you all to join the above cultural district. Um, and so we're, we're trying to just build that infrastructure, mostly of partnerships um, as best we can and our partnerships with the town. And also we're trying to just kind of make a lot of noise and create a lot of visibility for the arts and make it tangible and palpable for people in their everyday lives in town, for them to notice, for them to realize the value. That is our big goal, is helping people both in the town government and just everyday citizens to realize the value of the arts in their lives. It's not necessarily something that they only do on a Saturday night, but it's something that can enhance your experience every single day when you walk down the street. So, um, and, and it really it really does add value. Plus, uh, town kind of likes to hear that it would also boost the local economy. So, um, and it is, and it is. And we are working on um, measuring that impact as well and working hard on telling our story. So I'll talk about that a little bit more in a, in a little bit. Um, but for now, um, yeah, we want to, I want, we're gonna turn it over to Stuart. Where's Stuart? Are you ready? Okay. So this, this part is the beginning of number three, what do we offer? And we'd like to show you, um, first of all, our website, which I hope you'll all find is, is a huge useful asset for you as, um, well, let me take that step down, <laughs> to promote your events. Sorry about that. I want to just walk you through just a couple of our, our, resource, our media resources um, that we use to, that we offer to all of you. It's uh, free resources for offering information uh, for artists, visiting local and visiting artists, art consumers, cultural tourists, and arts programming providers, broadly defined. So. Uh, we primarily have four main areas of our website, artsarlington.org, which was formed really to uh, collect all of the information about all the cultural activities in town in one centralized uh, spot for you know everyone who wanted to find out about all the enriching things we're doing in town. There are four main functions, I would say, of the site that are available to all of you Nonprofits, um, different kinds of directory, resource directories, cultural district maps, uh, cultural news, and events calendars. So I'm just going to show some of these to you very briefly. You can explore on your own. Uh, the, the most important thing is that all of this is free to artists and to organizations alike. You can submit releases, news, uh, events through here. And we have various mechanisms to signal boost for you and to help. We really want to help promote uh, both Arlington as a cultural destination and all of the cultural providers here. So first of all, I'll show you just some of the kinds of directories that you can make use of. Maybe 
so we have we do have a directory of free listings for art supply stores, businesses, venues, construction, uh, marketing services, support resources, including grants, calls for uh, art that, submissions, <laughs> networking uh, for artists, and development opportunities for artists. To show you some of the kinds of uh, directory listings. So. If you have a performance space, if you have a rehearsal space, you can come here and post these for free. Um, every section has a form where you can submit all the information about your organization uh, and give us permission. We do ask that it be opt-in. We don't go out and just research you and you know put up potentially inaccurate information about you. If, your phone number changes, if your call for submission, if your calendar changes, we're not going to do that, but um, but we'll happily you know, help you keep it up to date if you just get in touch with us. We do ask you to opt into these things, just like for newsletters and others. The second section is a dynamic, interactive, extremely cool uh, map of our new cultural district. Um, it's built on the Google Interactive Map and it provides wayfinding among all of the very cool things that we have going on in town. Defined, uh, shows the boundaries of the defined cultural district. If you are um, operating within the cultural district and you haven't submitted your your profile to us yet, we strongly encourage you to do this. Um, we're looking to build this functiona uh, functionality out more as we move forward with the website development. Um, you can sort by different type of cultural resource, performance space, uh, rehearsal space, you know, museum, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So um, it's really a wonderful way of really just visualizing concretely everything that town has to offer and to help visitors from town uh, find it in particular. So the third part is a, we have a pretty robust homepage cultural news section. And that's where we invite you to submit if you have a press release, if you have a feature article about something you know, that's a signature event for you during the year, and you'd like our help promoting it. Uh, we do have uh, a new section where we're happy to again signal news and uh, use the, we use these then to also promote on social media. We generally use these uh, to uh, build out our newsletter, which we send out on a monthly basis. Um, again, all of this is free to you. We just ask you to you know, send the updated information. And finally, the uh, most exciting thing about the site is probably our uh, events panel. And this uses the Artsopolis API uh, that's provided by Arts Boston. Uh, so it really is the the first time any any resources pulled together collectively all of the great things that are happening in Ireland uh, in one easy to navigate spot into the sort. Um, now the thing about this is in order to participate in it all you have to do is open a free account on Arts Boston. I know some of you have it but not everyone does. It's when you click on submit event there it will take you right to an account <coughs> Creation for uh, if you look around, uh, it's, it's quite easy. Um, yeah, in fact, I thought I had this is what happens when you log in to get to uh, create basically your organization business profile, uh, then you can. Uh, add a venue if you have a physical space or more than one. And finally, you add your events to a simple form. And automatically, every event you post 
uh, that is that is staged in Arlington will appear on our site, but it will also be available on a wide variety of other syndicated uh, sites uh, that Arts Boston serves. So you're really getting exposure broadly, regionally, and also uh, in town uh, for our own users here and visitors here in town. You can also like with Facebook, add co-sponsors, co-presenters. If you're doing something with us, it really helps if you, if you tag us in Arts Boston, and it just extends your message that much farther. We have taken out, we've taken out an institutional uh, uh, account with Arts Boston and hope to uh, provide further uh, maybe co-op advertising opportunities for institutions in town and so forth. Finally, as I mentioned, we do also signal boost through the newsletter, social media, Facebook and Instagram, local media. We have a recurring uh, calendar section on your Arlington. We often boost and patch with the local. Uh, we've, we've done programs with ACMI, and we hope to keep building out these channels to help promote all of the kinds of programs, not just that we're producing natively in the commission, but that all of the institutions in town are partnering with us. For you. Um, I'll let it go there, just reminding you it's, it's opt-in. We're happy to help you. It's completely free to all of you. And um, just reach out to us if you can help you get off. One question. Yes. If you put your listing on the Arts Boston, mm -hmm. Uh, is that covered for all the other Arlington listings as well? Uh, so it will, if you if you place it on Arts Boston, yes. So if someone uh, on Arts Boston itself searches for events in Arlington, it will still serve up on their site as well. It, they also serve Jazz Boston. So if you're looking for jazz events in Arlington, you'll come up on the Jazz Boston site. So. You're getting a much wider reach than just our arts Arlington audience. Um, so you're being packaged in many different ways that are relevant. If it's kid friendly, if it's free, if you're using boss picks, uh, all of these are amplified. But this is the main vehicle for communicating the calendar events within our Yes, well. yes. This is our, our main way of sorting and disseminating information. And picking which ones to feature on the home page and so That's how we find out about it. Do you coordinate with the Arlington advocate around? Do you coordinate with the Arlington advocate for this paper? Ah, uh, we, do, we do sometimes boost specific events through Wicked Local and Gatehouse Media and the advocate. Uh, we do also sometimes send releases to. The advocate, you know, the print, but increasingly their uh, digital packages. Okay, thank you so much, Stuart. I hope you guys will have the chance to, if you have not already, peruse the website on your own, check frequently for events that you might want to attend, um, share them, on our share from our Facebook page where we also post, to share all over to your own network so social media. We would really appreciate if you were able to link our website um, to your websites so that you know people could see more about what's going on in Arlington. People could understand that Arlington is a happy happening place, that there are lots of things going on, and that this is a you know a, a one-stop shop for them to find that out. So we would really appreciate that. We would also really appreciate your you're putting these on your cars um, if they fit, because um, these uh, will help you know, spread the word that arts are, exist in Arlington, um, wherever you're driving, wherever you're parking, and it's a great way to find your car in a parking lot. So, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. That's true. Yes. Do the events that we list on Arts Boston that then go on this website also yeah. go on the listing automatically onto your Facebook? Uh, not automatically, but we, we do, we do, well, Terry, where's Terry? We do How boost, do you? Yeah, we try to move some events, um, especially if you let us know. Um, but we, we look at the calendar coming up and we try to figure out which ones to boost. We try to get a wide assortment, we try to get theater and, and uh, music and arts, all so that we have a wide assortment. Part of why I asked is before this all started, 
um, Jeff, who just started an uh, events in Arlington Facebook page that I've ended up moderating. Oh, really? and so we oh, should great. talk. Uh, yeah. well, I'm we'll not talk. sure if it's redundant or what. So we yeah. I don't think redundancy is a thing. I mean, <laughs> everyone, there's, 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 everyone gets their information from yeah. many different right. places. Right. I think yeah. that is yeah. totally valid. And the same okay. thing is that if you're an artist, there's also a website, a, a web page specific for artists to come and to find places to network. And we also do have a Facebook page, which is called Artlings, where you can also find what's going on specifically for artists. Or visual art. No, no, it's for all the arts. All the arts and art artlings. We've listed on the resources section here, and you can find a lot more information about Artlings as well. If you just click on resources, you'll get to the main. The resources section, you'll get to the landing page and there'll be a big, um, it'll be clear artists found here. I have a question. Yes. I was wondering, did ACMI boost events on your channel? Um, thank you for saying that because <laughs> we're asking that. Um, so I apologize. Uh, several of us at ACMI had direct conflicts tonight. I had the least direct conflict, yes. but mine starts mm -hmm. at 8 o'clock. So I'm going to have to leave. So I, if you don't mind, I just wanted to say, I'm going to leave my cards with Charlotte and please grab one if you are at all interested in using ACMI in the same way as Stuart was just describing a lot of what ACAC can do for you. ACMI also brings the power of video. I think you all probably are aware that video is a very powerful tool for promotion in this world that we're living in right now. We are particularly um, interested in supporting nonprofits and arts organizations. And to the extent that you guys are the confluence of both, you are our people that we really, really want to work with as well as, well as we can um, within. So we don't produce things for you, but we will make it as easy as possible for you to produce a PSA, something that describes um, that is a visit to your gallery or to your organization or space. Um, we also are looking, if any of you were interested, we would love to start a television show that highlights maybe 10 minute segments on each of um, mm -hmm. three organizations um, making up a half hour show. We need a host to do that. We would work again very closely with you, lots of support. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and all you need to do is reach out and start the process and we will take things from there. But um, this is this is this is a very full room, which I'm very mm -hmm. impressed by, and um, and we would really love to. Work, we do work with a number of you guys already. I get to see Betsy all the time, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and um, you know just know that we are another resource you can count on, and we will be very responsive, and we will be effective. I promise. Thank you for that. I know a couple of you are already you know, thinking along sure. those lines based on your survey responses. So I think that we get a couple of calls. And <laughs> yes, um, it is a great way to help expand audiences, which I know is another thing that we're also all concerned about. So um, thank you for being here tonight and thank you for that offer. Um, okay, so Am I in your way? moving on, let me see. Not so much. I wanted to just go on a little bit with um, with things Very that we nice. offer, just super quickly, a quick rundown. I wanted to tell you that you know, based on your surveys where you talked a little bit about your events, some of which we know about, we're starting to build kind of a cultural calendar um, so that we kind of have some highlights for almost each month. Um, there, you know, October's a little thin here, March is a little thin here, so if you have things going on in these months, you know, we'd love to hear about them. If you do, you know, on your way out today, if you see something that you do that is missing here, um, you know, it, we're putting, I put monthly events in January that maybe in January we can highlight all the things you can do monthly throughout the whole year, like the coffee house and like the open mic and things like that that happen every month. Um, but here is sort of, you know, what we do. It's pretty full, pretty full, um, full calendar. AFD, your shows are not on here because I don't know what the regular, thing is but please you know do let us know and we can sort of know that in the fall and spring we're gonna you know say hey it's AFD season so something that we're working on yes people can write directly on here um, I sort of thought people might do it as they come in but that didn't happen so on your way out you know feel free to write in here um, write to us but we're trying to sort of get a big picture of what goes on here uh, by the year so we can sort of you know start to see put themes in and figure out how we can kind of 
push you know, sort of market by month, right? Yeah. Okay, so that's one thing. Um, promotion, as you see through our website, also happens. Grants. How many? Everybody knows about the local cultural council of France. <coughs> yes. Yes. Nodding. So there's a grants committee, which is the local cultural council, cult, uh, local cultural council, which is a <laughs> chapter of the Massachusetts Cultural Council. Um, so uh, we offer grants through that process. Uh, October 15th is a deadline every year, and I believe that there's also a, a seminar um, coming, like in June, to help you uh, think of projects and how to how to write them up. So if you have more questions about grants, there's a section on the uh, website as well. So that is a good way to um, get some funding. Um, town hall space. We are entitled as a town organization to use a town hall at a rate of $55 an hour. So if you want to use town hall for any reason for something, you might want to ask us to be a sponsor of your event. This is what the Arlington Film Festival did just uh, last month. and. Um, asked us to just sponsor we didn't have to do anything but just like say yes we'll sponsor and write them an email and and they got a good rate on the, on the town hall which is very nice um artists in residency yes so this year we're really excited it's our first year that we're doing an artist in residency program that cecily is organizing and we don't have too much time we don't have any time to go into it <laughs> but i'm just going to show you a visual it's going to be really interesting we have this wonderful artist michelle Luigi who um, crochets uh, out of plastic bags, recycled plastic bags, and makes these amazing sculptures. And you can all be involved or, you know, so um, yeah, you can attend these workshops. We already have several nonprofits who have offered to host them um, in terms of uh, lending space. And uh, we consider an artist in residency program, you know, if we can manage to keep it going, going forward, you know, a great way to sort of enhance you know, things that you are already doing, like, you know, it could be an artist in residence that works with your collection and helps to interpret it in a new way or adds, you know, interpretive art on top of something that's already there. Or, you know, there are many ways that artists are, you know, extremely creative with figuring out ways to, um, you know, interact and dialogue and with um, with existing environments and art in, in new and interesting ways and, in, and also involves people, involves citizens and sort of highlight uh, highlight things for them, like sort of create experiences. So, um, and then I wanted to introduce Andrea Nicolay, who is uh, the head of the Cultural yeah. District Managing well, Partnership. I'm, a, I'm one of the managing district. partners. I'll stand up to, yes, Ooh, please. whoa, light in the eyes. Um, so I can't talk as fast as Stephanie. <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm rushing, but I'll try. I'm slow down, we're just short of time. No, I get it. <laughs> we respect time in Cultural District land, and yeah. ACAC land. Um, I just wanted to say on behalf of the cultural district, it's really easy to become a managing partner. Um, there are very minimal meetings that one attends as a managing partner. Um, there's a core managing partnership that's sort of the executive committee, but what we do is just promote the district. MCC designated us in 2017 and all managing partners basically agree to help promote the district. You can be a managing partner if you, ha if you are located within the district or if you have events that happen in the district. So. Um, Stephanie's example of co you know, co-sponsoring an event with ACAC and being in town hall, that would qualify you to be a managing part or a member of the cultural district. So it's another easy way, but um, it's very simple. And every year we apply to MCC for a grant and each year we focus on a different aspect of promotion for the district. So we're still young as a three-year-old district. We're basically a toddler now. Um, so we have a logo for the district. We built on our branding this past year by creating a brochure, which I really should have a copy have, of here. Have, it's over there. there. Yeah. But they're yeah, on the table. On the way out. They're out there. Yes, don't yes. miss it. It's adorable. We <laughs> want you to put it on your fridge. There, yeah, okay. Sarah has a copy right there. What Arlington is all about, arts and culture-wise. So um, our application form is on the cultural district, or I mean, sorry, the ACAC site in the cultural district section scroll all the way down and it's a very simple application so I encourage you to head.
that's where artsarlington.org comes in, or the arts calendar comes in big time, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, that's a really great point. I mean, the website is for all of Arlington. It is, a, you know, it's town-wide. It promotes art all of Arlington. The council district has to be a walkable area, a dense area, so it is between East Arlington and Arlington Center. And one of the ways that we got that passed and designated was by using the bike path as connective tissue and doing a lot of public art along mm -hmm. there. So um, that's why it's limited, but the goal of the cultural district is, again, to raise the profile of Arlington for everybody's benefit, <coughs> whether you're in the cultural district or not. And again, it's great to also, even if you're not in the cultural district, produce events that, that are in the cultural district. Um, and that's an option. So, uh, all right, I just wanted to give a quick uh, uh, highlight that uh, coming soon is also um, some help with data collection. I mentioned it's really important that we learn to tell our story well, that we become sort of a palpable um, existence in Arlington, in everyone's mind. Everyone should identify Arlington as a place for the arts, that, and that, that arts you know, make their lives better <laughs> by living here or visiting here. So in order to do that, uh, we also have to tell our story. We need to, and also to, to also show that we're built in a local economy, we have to demonstrate impact. So um, we really wanted to ask you all how you're collecting data. We want to talk a little bit about that. I think we're going to have to do that offline or in another meeting once we have uh, more of this going. But just know that this is a project for us and that, that Allie Carter from the Department of Planning and Community Development who uh, applied for a grant with the Metropolitan Area Planning Council. Um, it's a technical assistance grant, so it's not cash, but it's their help in in helping us um, develop tools for data collection. So how many of you are already measuring data? If you're okay, so so you know a handful of you. So that is great. We would love to sort of see those numbers, especially if you have them across a few years. Mm -hmm. um, and especially and I think now I think we will try to get a baseline from all of you so we can also see whether or not you know we are making an impact and helping all of us, you know, lifting all of us up at the, at the same time. So um, we'll be in touch about, you know, what, what your data methods are, what it is you do measure. And then once um, MAPC um, gets going on this, on this project, we will also have other ideas to offer to you and other tools on how you can, how you can collect data that will help tell your story. So um, that, that's an important piece. Well, my name is Sarah Stackhouse, and um, I um, live in, in, on Ar Franklin Street in Arlington Center. And I have two kids who have done programs and connected with a lot of the things that you in this room do. So I just want to say, as a parent, it's an incredible place to have artistic children or children who just use the arts to grow up. And I'm just so glad to be in the room with everybody. Um, I uh, I work right now as a consultant to a whole bunch of arts nonprofits, uh, particular mostly. Um, mostly performing arts, but I've worked with some other art forms as well. I do a lot of work with Kristen, and we've worked together at Silk Road and at do other entities. Um, and I was one of the founders of the Actor Shakespeare Project, um, which is a theater company in town. Um, I, I'm so glad Tom is here. I haven't seen you in a really long time. Um, but Tom is part of the story I'm going to tell, so that's exciting. Um, when I was a young executive director, and trying to like prove myself and get my organization off the ground, I spent all of my energy thinking about like, how are we gonna stay afloat? How are we gonna market ourselves? How are we gonna make a niche? How are our programs gonna be good? Basically like head down working on that, which is where I think most of us spend most of our time. Um, and there's this crazy, amazing lady, uh, Swanee Hunt, who lived, some of you may know, I think you guys know her, over on Brattle Street, who doesn't live in Massachusetts anymore, but at the time, decided she wanted to fund a cohort of 30 youth arts organizations. And she funded us, but there was a caveat. If she funded you, you had to come in a room with everybody, and you had to figure out how you were going to share your donors with each other and do collective fundraising, which you can imagine the response was like, <laughs> hell no, right? <laughs> like, they're mine. 
Um, and the second thing was that you were going to start to learn about advocacy because collectively she believed you could actually create political change that would benefit the arts if you worked as a collective. And we didn't really believe it. Like we sort of said, yeah, maybe like we can vote for the MCC budget or we can send something, but we'll go because Swanee told us we had to go. Um, and part of what happened over like many years of being in a room with other people, which I think is one of the powers this has, is the convening power of just like sitting in a room with other people, is that I started to like lift my head up a little bit from like, wait a minute, I don't have to just do my job, I can actually like learn what other people are doing and then figure out how to navigate the environment that we're in better. Because I can understand, like, learn things from other people about what's happening with funding and what's happening with the press and what's happening with zoning. Or, and so I, it was an amazing thing to start to say, like, oh, I'm part of a sector. And I'm, they're all going to help each other navigate this environment, which is a tough environment for the arts. And then there was this really pivotal moment where I suddenly was like, or we could change the environment that we're trying to navigate. And is that possible? Because what we started to hear was that everyone had the same issues. It's really hard to get airtime. It's really hard to get foundations to pay attention to small organizations. Everyone's jumping from project to project to follow the foundation money. Um, how can we figure out the zoning piece that we need? How can we get officials that really promote policy and funding things that help the art sector? And each of us felt too small to do it. But when we sat in the room for a while, we suddenly were like, wait a minute, we could change this environment or we could try. And I suddenly was like, we have power, you know? And it feels silly. It's like a bunch of small arts organizations, but actually we do have power. And so um, Tom and I were in this, um, this program together that the MCC funded and the Barr Foundation and the Boston Foundation where we went to the Kennedy School with 40 arts organizations from across the state. And we were doing this work with Marshall Gans, who's like a storyteller for change. He's like a political organizer who uses story. So he was one of Obama's um, main organizers. And what he did is he got all these young people not to just use data and not to just use talking points, but to tell story, to create the movement that got him elected. And if you remember the Obama um, Democratic Convention speech, the one where he said, yes, we can, together we can, that whole thing, it's like perfect Marshall Gans storytelling, which is a story of me, story of us, story of now, let's go. Right. And so Tom and I took this class with a bunch of people, and we thought we would be great storytellers because we're arts people, and we were terrible. <laughs> we were terrible storytellers, except one guy, Abe Ryback from Theater of Benson, was a good storyteller. The rest of us got up and we're like, hi, I'm so-and-so, my mission is this, and that's not a story, right? Or we get up and sort of tell a story that doesn't end, which you know that I won't do. I'm almost done. Um, but one of the things that happened in this class is we started to talk about how Marshall's job was to change politics. Right? To get different people elected, to get different policies to happen, to get attention from the press. And he did it with arts leaders around story. And there was this day where we were in his class and we suddenly were like, what if we and all our patrons and all our board members and all the kids in our programs and all our partners got together around a collective issue? That's a lot of people, right? That's a lot of power, actually. It's not just the three board members and your five big donors. Suddenly you've got this big collective. And we began to think about how we could organize as a sector. And so for me, a big part of my life for the past eight years, seven years, has been working with Mass Creative, which is a state advocacy organization for the arts. And um, I talk all the time about how people can organize for change. And what I hear happening in this room, which is amazing, is a ton of networking, like, oh, you should know what coffee house is that, and oh, we should work together in the Fox thing, and that's amazing. And there's also potential, I think, to say, we have some shared issues in town, 
or we have some shared desires, or we have some uh, shared stumbling blocks, and how what would happen if we organized ourselves and got our people organized and asked the question and went to town hall with it, or went to the press with it, or applied for a grant with it? Could we actually create some change as a collective action? Um, as opposed to just a very rich, robust network. And um, I think it's exciting because I think that's possible in Arlington, especially with all the incredible work that's already been uh, created as a foundation. And I think that this group can connect Arlington to all of the other players who are doing that in the state. Because there are things that affect Arlington that also affect Medford and Somerville. And if you work with something like, if you work with the Mass Cultural Council and Mass Creative, those things can get bubbled up to the state house and maybe change something that's hard or engage some question that people aren't thinking for a minute, and my minute's on the stuff, about, um, mm -hmm. about why collective organizing could be part of our shared work and not just networking. And to just introduce that idea into the room. And I, my understanding is you filled out surveys and there are some shared needs, some shared concerns, and there's a bunch of ways to tackle that. One is to get advice from each other, and sort of, and another is to see if there can be collective action. So I think when you break into your groups, part of it is just to know each other and network, and part of it is to think about what could happen if you recognize how much power there could be if we really work together. And I just wanted to introduce that idea, and then. Also say, I'm in love with my town and <laughs> um, and happy to help, especially as it connects to Mass Creative and some of the larger things. I know you're working with Arts Boston already. But this thing about telling our story and getting data, there's already data that's been collected by the Mass Cultural Council and put into amazing factoid memes that could be being used by all of you as you apply for grants now. Um, and that's available, right? And that's another way that this organization can connect up to larger things happening. One of the things that shocked me was um, more people attend an arts event in Boston in a year than attend all four major sports team events in terms of numbers, right? There's a whole bunch of facts like that about how many dollars are being spent on jobs in the arts and how many um, local economies have seen impact and I feel like even if your data collection isn't done, that is statewide data that could be being used um, collectively by the group. Um, so if there's any way I can help make those connections um, or help shape some of the uh, collective action conversations, I would love to do it. And I just wanted to come introduce myself. And that's it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much, yes. Sarah. Thank you very generous of you to join our group tonight. Um, and to and to uh, offer that information and your, your expertise. So we're really, really grateful. It's exactly the kind of work we want to start doing. Um, I do want to move on a little bit to our surveys. I'm sure you're dying to hear uh, the results. And, uh, um, not all of you can turn them in. You are always welcome to do that at any time. We're not making um, And by doing that, we know that we are reaching a diverse, uh, a very diverse population in Arlington. It's, it's public schools are sort of a level playing field, and we can find everyone, anyone and everyone who has kids there. So that is 
great that, that a lot is being done at the public schools and that our arts departments in the visual arts and the, and the performing arts are so very strong there. Um, and that a lot of the organizations here are also working with, um, with public schools and others meet um, diverse uh, community members in other ways. Um, so uh, by, by what they offer, the types of works that, and I'm very curious to hear um, well, for us to learn from each other about outreach and how and how you're reaching um, sort of diverse um, a diverse population and um, perhaps people who are underserved uh, in Arlington by the arts. Um, so I think I think there is a, a concern about that. Yeah, you could just flip it up in other way about about the um, kind of diversity in the town. And I'm sort of uh, one of the questions that I would ask here is who are we not reaching? I mean, when we look at the, some of the people that we are reaching here, who are we Who are we perhaps not reaching? I think that we are reaching sort of youth and, and um, some seniors and adults, but perhaps um, there are still members of, you know, certain um, members of, youth, of those, of those uh, sectors, the youths and the, and, the, um, and the seniors and the, and the um, and adults in town that we're not reaching, um, people who are live further from Mass Ave, or people who are working, you know, 10 hours a day, and you know, I'm just like, are there, are, are we reaching, um, are we reaching everyone that we need to in creating um, equity? So in some of the initiatives, I see that that, that is a concern, um, creating an, um, equity and initiatives, um, um, diversity, attention to diversity, and I also see um, some new strategies, the ACMI, as a, as, a, as a resource, as I mentioned before. And through scholarship funds, trying to create access again. In terms of the needs, um, obviously the, fund, the funding is a need, volunteers are a need, and um, infrastructure is a need. Yeah, this one. <laughs> This part one, I won't say who wrote this, but a strong sustainable infrastructure that supports strategic growth through broad participation and by wide support from a large cross section of the community. Broad participation by wide, not the end, by wide um, support and wide support. No, and wide. Take out the by. All right, did everyone get that? Yes. A strong sustainable infrastructure that supports strategic growth through broad participation and wide support from a large cross section. Uh, that could have been our. That could have been written by us right there, <laughs> or that could have written by the collective us. You know, I mean, I think that that's really something um, that we need. Um, yeah, everybody needs funding, and a lot of people are asking for more promotion, which is great. That's what they're asking from us. Promotion. That's something that, that we can do. Um, facilitating connections and partnerships. That's something that we're trying to do here. Um, institutional awareness more build audiences and more advertising and promotion. So these are some things that I you know, see in common. You can get uh, more specific as well. I mean, obviously if we get too specific, then we're not, we're not <coughs> sticking to those things in common. But I think, I think it's sort of interesting to see um, how specific we can get and still, and still um, have, a common, have a common goal. Um, as far as you know, building audiences, well, you know, are you all reaching similar audiences? Are you reaching different audiences? Are you not reaching the same people? Would you like that you all like to be reaching? Or, you know, or are some reaching some audiences and others are reaching other audiences and maybe you can cross promote and so that everybody can you know, reach everyone. Let's, let's hear a little bit about group one's conversation. Who's group one? Group one over there? All right. So tell us, tell us what you talked about. Summarize your yes, so that, yeah, we, we, we went right quickly through every through all these questions, oh, and, and that was pretty easy, I think, for us to come up with some commonalities. So, under the first one of, the, of goals, building community, educating, and engaging new audiences seem to just kind of float right up to the top. And how many people share those goals as well? We have like a this kind of thing, if you share, yes, you came up with that very similar. All right, great, great. And then in terms of um, needs, volunteers, resources in terms of financial, money, space, rehearsal, as in you know, uh, re rehearsal space, 
and professional development. <clears throat> okay, anyone? Did anyone have those on their list? Go like this. If you had those on your list. Money. Is that so? Money. Not as much. Okay. Right. okay. And then so, finally, um, in terms of uh, one of the three ways that we could uh, um, take action, uh, a common planning calendar, including the schools and towns that would be internally used and to give people like a whole year ahead uh, vision of what's happening so that we all could plan our events and not or want to overlap. Um, so that would be very helpful. An arts volunteer fair, which I really like that idea. Uh, a time when uh, as many arts organizations as possible could get together in one space and have people who are interested in volunteering to learn about all these different organizations and make a choice. Um, and then a, a spreadsheet with contact information with everybody who's here and others who are part of this um, nonprofit organization world. Um, so to facilitate connection among all of us. And then finally, um, more meeting sessions to facilitate these kinds of collaborations so that we all get to really know each other much more, much better than we do now. Yep. 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 Great. Thank you very, very much. Too. And I think that the only Think that it was different. That um, um, to, essentially to bring a uh, build coalitions with non-art groups, and one of the resources that Sarah gave us was uh, Art Factor is a data sharing organization that they already have ready-made. This is what the music does for the town. This is what the paintings, what the galleries, that everything, and so. Taking advantage of that was an important thing. The other one is the same as collision building and supporting each other across you, all media. So that. I'm sorry, can you speak? Yes. You so the whole. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry. Um, I'm sorry. The, the other one was that regular meetings that we can really uh, get to know each other, get to know what we do. So to really come together, uh, that was, I think it was that yours? Yeah, I think. Yes, a couple yeah. of us have But it was everybody. We agreed yeah. that this was the three of them. But the other one is uh, so that once we know, and, and the calendar was we also isolated, but once we know is to make it a concerted effort to support each other across all media. So that once we have that calendar, so that was the three things that, that was done. Can I add one thing about A? Yes. Just this idea of uh, creating coalitions with non arts people. Right. You may already be doing some of it, but it's the question of like, could all the restaurant owners join the Arlington, like the ACA, right. because they recognize why? Could all could, so that there could be a way that the value of what's happening here is promoted by people who are not arts people? Right. One of our ideas. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, that's a very important one. Thank you. Thank you very much, Group Two. Uh, group Three. We, we came at it a, from a little different angle, but I'd say we shared most of these concerns. Um, so we really looked at the needs of each of the individual vendors and then how there was a comment among us with the need for promotion and outreach, getting the word out there about what we're doing, uh, need for space to work in, need for uh, basically skilled uh, both volunteers, board members, people in development, staff, you know, a skill base to help support so uh, the goals then would be to you know find uh, more opportunities for development, for uh, the recruitment of skilled people. Some of the ideas we came up with to achieve that might be creating a skills exchange directory on Arts Arlington. Not you know where to hire an artist to facilitate something, but also a, a fundraiser, marketing assistant, a volunteer coordinator and to help to promote people with these skills, to create more cross-collaboration and promotion opportunities, to create a big list that would be shared. Again, that scary idea of sharing the donors and the vested art stakeholders that we've all collected in some kind of exchange so we can message them in a safe space. Arts Boston has an exchange like this somewhat similar that might be something that we could do with the commission to help us all, you know, uh, reach each other's dedicated arts audiences for everyone's benefit. 
and also invite find ways to invite more money into the cultural council grant pool through our own fundraising efforts, but also through collaborating with organizations like this. Um, there was a great suggestion of when we post our events or send out releases, can we add a little tag for artsarlington.org at the bottom of them? Yes, please. <laughs> and if we have some fundraising efforts um, to help build that pool, the bigger the grants we can give out to organizations like this. So I think we get that idea of maybe a blue jean ball that's more cooperative uh, across multiple organizations. So those are some of the solutions we have. Great. Wonderful. Thank you so much. I think you accomplished a lot in a, a short amount of time. I sort of feel like we all need to give ourselves a round of applause. So, um, just to wrap up, some next steps. Um, next steps, it sounds like I heard that people want us to uh, pile all these notes and send them out, along with a list of you know email addresses of everyone here. Is everyone in agreement with that? Yeah. Okay. Um, sounds like people would like us to do some follow-up meetings. So, I'm not sure how many times a year that Helpful, but we will certainly plan on at least one follow-up meeting again, in the, probably in the you know in the in the first part of the calendar year. Um, hopefully, we can fit it in you know between now and June. Um, and then um, I'd like to add to this that um, you know again, just can't emphasize enough our telling our story and um, you know creating value or just like uh, you know promoting the idea that the arts has value. And so I think that that's a great idea, you know, um, including non-arts organizations and um, and to really you know, build Thank those you. partnerships as well. We are planning to have a business meeting, um, you know, for-profit cultural businesses or perhaps they'll expand it to, you know, because there's a wide range of what can potentially be a culturally related business um, or, um, you know, either who are already, you know, maybe hosting art in their in their space or uh, music or who are um, or who could potentially get involved and so we will be Thank doing you. some of that but I would also encourage all of you to reach out to businesses that you may frequent either just for your through your personal life um, or as as partners in, in some of the things that, that you're doing I would you know invite invite not just as sponsors or as um, you know just just for a source of money but for actively take, um, you know, take uh, take part in what you're doing, so that you are creating a true partnership where both benefit, where both business and and you benefit, and that way they will see that value. So I think that's something that we can we can do individually and as a collective. Um, and so let's let's. Um, I think we're sort of very full for tonight, and, <laughs> and so. Um, I'd like maybe just to go around and ask how everyone's feeling before we leave. Cold. Um, yeah. Besides cold. Besides, besides cold. Besides cold. But let's let's hear how people are feeling about tonight, about the work we're doing. Are you you know left wanting more? Are you, did you not get enough? Or just like you know, just the mood that you're in I right now. It's a great introductory meeting. I mean, that, I don't yeah. think we have things that came up that we all would like to see followed up on, but okay. I think it's a great. Great, thank you. So we're going to just limit it to sort of like one word or short phrase. You don't have to elaborate too much, but thank you very much for that, that positive feedback. Much, okay. <laughs> no, just, you know, for the interest of time, just to, just to get a little short temperature. So. Looking forward to digging deeper. Wonderful. Nice. Energized. Oh. Great. Momentum. Yes. Great. To put faces with names. <laughs> uh, encouraged. Yeah, new connections. Uh, more informed. Great start. Curious. I was going to say courage as well. So, okay. say ambitious. Excited. More optimistic. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say excited. It's just nice. It's so great to be here with you guys. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ten years ago, I didn't see anybody A big step, a big step. I'm just excited about how supportive Arlington is of the arts. Arlington is supportive of the arts. 
Ready to focus. <laughs> Ready to focus. And focus we will. We will take all of these nodes, we will distill them, we will pass them out, and keep the lines of communication yeah, open. Please, so yeah, please yeah. send us your ideas um, or conferences that you go to that inspire you, ideas you think that we should try as a group, or but Charlotte, yes, I'm sorry. Um, no, it's okay. okay. I, I'm encouraged as well, but is there a, like a group uh, forum that we can all use and participate in? We can create one. That would be great. Yay. We would be happy to do that. I'm a yes. forum person. Okay, great. Can you scribble that down so we don't forget? And 